Welcome back to Tech Time with Ms. Boykin. We are going to start a new mini series and we are going to start working in the Google platform. We are going to do a lot of our work in Google Slides because it's a little bit easier to uh, manipulate and move around um, and, you know, make it what you want it to be. So the first thing we're going to look at is how we can start to make some of our worksheets interactive. So the very first thing that I do before I even start putting together a worksheet or finding one online and making it interactive is I change the layout of um, my slides. So right now it's on just your generic default um, widescreen. So I'm going to change it to the actual size of a piece of paper. That way when I'm looking at worksheets or I'm downloading them off of HMH and I want to make them interactive, it's just a little bit easier for me to do that. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to scroll down to Page Setup. I am going to go to Custom and then I'm just going to type in 8 by 11 because usually that is just the size of a, a piece of paper. I'm going to delete these boxes because I will not need them as I continue to work. And the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what worksheet am I actually going to use. I've already downloaded one. So for today's purposes, we are going to use a Kinder cut and paste worksheet. So I am going to blow this up and right now I am going to actually cut this and manipulate it a little bit. So if you're using a MacBook, I will press Command Shift and then the number four. If you're using a Windows based computer like the Dell computers we get from the district, then you're going to want to use your snippet tool so you can search snippet in your Windows options and then press new when your actual app comes up. So I want the instructions. So I'm going to snip it. I'm going to see. Go down a little bit. I'm going to stop it right there. Okay, and now I'm going to pull back up my Google where I'm actually working. So there's, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, I can download this as a background and then put the pieces around it, or I can... Um, Put the screenshot over here and then download it as a picture and then put it back up here. So we'll we'll play around with it to see what we like better and we'll look at the difference. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this so we can see the difference. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try it as a background to see if I like that more or see if I want to manipulate it a little bit. So I'm going to choose my image. I've already downloaded this, so I am just going to drag and drop. I am the drag and drop queen. Drag it, drop it, let it upload itself. And then I'm going to press done. So this is what it would look like if you set it as a background. And what you would need to do is snip the pieces. So I'm going to go back and snip these individually. Because think about it, if we were in a classroom, they would cut these individually and they would paste them individually. So I'm going to go to command, shift, Four on my Mac, I am going to snip this piece, okay? And then I'm going to wait for it to upload on my computer. And then I am just going to drag it and drop it. And so I would start lining these pieces right around here. And then what I would do is I would um, take this and I would upload it to my Google Classroom and then give instructions to the kids like, hey, what I want you to do is, you know, take these pieces and match them with the rhyming words. And so they would, you know, pick this up and they would drag it over here to bag. Okay, so that is one way you can do this. The second way you can do it is I'm going to go down here to slide number two. I'm going to take my picture. I'm going to manipulate this just a little bit so the piece, all the pieces actually fit on the page. I'm going to squeeze that in just a little bit. I think this is good. I don't want to distort it too much. And then I'm actually going to go up here to File, Download just this slide, and I'm going to download it as a... Let's do a PNG. 
Sometimes that's a little bit easier um, to work with. Okay, I'm gonna drag it and drop it right here. And drag it and drop it. Okay, there's my interactive worksheet. And then now I'm going to see if it makes a difference when I try to upload this as my background because what I'm looking for is to have that white space. Okay, that's actually exactly what I wanted to have. I want to have this white space right here so I don't need slide two anymore because the kids can pick this up and they can move it around and I don't want that. I don't want them to be able to do that. I want them to not be able to touch this background part of it and you can see now I'm trying to click and move it and I just can't. So I think that I actually like the second one that we did better which all we did we took the screenshot we put it on a slide we downloaded that slide as a picture and then we uploaded it back as a background okay and so I'm gonna do that one more time just so you can see what I did so I'm gonna add new I'm going to delete this box we don't need this Okay, and then one more time, I'm going to pick up my screenshot. I'm going to drag it over here. I like to make sure that it doesn't look too distorted. So I think that's that's pretty good. I'm gonna make sure this, okay. And then I went to file, download. It doesn't really matter if you download it as a PNG or a JPEG. Um, I think it really depends on the operating system that you're using. For Mac, the pictures are just clear when you download it as a PNG. So now I'm downloading it. And then I just drag and drop on my screen. I'm just going to say keep both for now since we're doing this. And this is the picture that we could manipulate. So I'm going to delete that now. I went to background, I went to choose image, dropped it, done, and now we can't move it. So now all I want them to be able to move are the little pieces right here. So now I'm just going to add these little pieces. I'm going to size them a little bit. And then I'm going to drop them over here just like they would look at the on the worksheet. So I'm going to continue working through this. And I am just taking pictures of the pieces. And I am just going through and doing all of them. Okay. So now I can start picking these pieces and adding them to my worksheet and what I like about Google slide and why I like to work on Google slides so much, <clears throat> excuse me, is because I can actually, as I'm sizing things, it will help me figure out if they're all the same size and that just might be an OCD thing for me, but it is very helpful because I like for things to match. Okay, so now you have your pieces where the kids can actually go in and they can look at matching those around. You have instructions up here, but just like we did the command shift four when we took that screenshot, you can always cut those directions out and you can add your own directions. So you are not married to having those directions up there. You can add your own in anyways. And then we want to share Remember that your students are going to be logged in through their Clever DISD Google Classroom. So they will be logged into their ID number at DallasISD.org. 
So we are just going to change link to anyone who has a Dallas ISD email. We are going to change it to edit so they can edit it. Okay, and then we are going to press done. Okay, and so now you have your worksheet. So now you can decide um, if you want to download this, if you are using one of the cute new Bitmoji um, interactive boards, you can always just copy this URL right here and then just drop it right into your Bitmoji um, interactive board and you, you can send that to them. You can add this to your Google Classroom. You can kind of decide how you um, want to do this. So just to go back over what we did today, we looked at how we can take a worksheet that we would use in the classroom, how we can get it onto our Google slide and how we can make it a little bit more interactive for our students. So the next video that I upload, I'm gonna show you how you can actually force them to make a copy Every single time a student opens it, they'll make their own copy and it'll save it on their um, Google Cloud, just like what we're doing. Um, that way they're not actually messing with your template, which is what you're making right here. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day.